Okay, so we're going to have a look at the Mattel Aquarius. It's not really a machine that a lot of people have heard of. It wasn't sold for that long. It had about a four month lifespan, really, with its original manufacturer's Mattel. Um, and it didn't do very well. Nobody particularly bought it. I mean, we're talking 100,000 plus units, which sounds a lot, but when you put it up against the 17 million Commodore 64s and the 5 million Spectrums in total between Amstrad and Sinclair that were sold. It's not very many at all. Now the machine itself was based on the Z80 CPU running at 3.5 megahertz. It only had 4K of memory, expandable to 20K though. Not a lot really when you consider at the time the Commodore 64 had already been out at 64K. Um, the BBC Micro was out with 32k, the Spectrum was out with 48k, so it wasn't a massive amount by any means. Had a standard resolution of 256 by 192 pixels, um, and it only had 40 by 24 texts, which were 8 by 8 pixels. Very similar, to be honest, to the VIC-20. Um, and it produced 16 colours, again, very similar spec. Um, to some of the other micros which only produce 16 colours um, which are kind of comparable to the VIC-20 with the 8 foreground and 8 background but again this was meant to be a true 16 colour computer. Now it had a chiclety style rubber keyboard which is quite nice to look at. If you look at the machine it's, it is quite nice. I mean it's quite colourful. The colours complement each other um, but the keyboard is awful to type on it's just awful the keys are too small space bars in the wrong place it's just a nightmare yeah the keyboard really wasn't one of its best features um, the machine itself is quite small it's very weighty though it is does weigh a considerable amount for the size of the machine it's probably three times the weight of a, probably more actually, than a ZX Spectrum. Um, the cartridge slot on the right hand side, there's a little cover on the top which you can take off and it was predominantly designed to run cartridge software uh, because really, to be honest, they only released about 21 programs or 21 software titles for this model and that was it. There's nothing else really out there because software companies and developers never really latched onto it. There was a bit of a running joke um, by the designers saying that it was basically a machine for the 70s. It was too late to market. If it came out a few years prior to that and it was competition with the ZX81 and it was priced at roughly the same price as the ZX81, it would have done extremely well because hands down it beat the 1K black and white ZX81 by, by a fair margin, by a mile. But up against newer machines and the more current machines such as the Commodore 64, the BBC B, later the Electron, the Sinclair Spectrum, the Auric one, um, it wasn't particularly good, even up against the Video Genie that was out at the time, or the Color Genie rather. Uh, so, it was the biggest failure. From a point of view of it being a collector's item, uh, yeah, it's great. It's a collector's piece, it, you can't do a lot with it. The basic was reasonably pared down, to be fair. Um, and it's not a machine you can actually use a lot on a daily basis. You know, it's for nostalgia wise and to have a poke at it every now and again to see if it still works. You know, or you might not want to turn it on just in case it doesn't, because if it's never turned on, then it might turn on. But I mean, as a machine itself, it doesn't have many uses, to be honest. It's slow. It's cumbersome to use. There's only a few limited expansions for it. It was a small printer and a cassette deck, um, a couple of paddles to play your games on, and a 
a RAM expander and a few cartridge games. It's not going to keep many enthusiasts really happy, is it really, to be fair. But if you're collecting it and you want to preserve it for future generations on nostalgia or even put it in a case and put it on your wall, well, yeah, it's an ideal thing as a collector's point of view. It's not as bad as it's made out to be. It was just far too late. And unfortunately, it never really made any inroads into anything to do with the early microcomputer. So it never ever made it in the same way as ZX Spectrum or ZX81 or even the Auric 1 sold much, much better than this did. And it wasn't particularly a brilliant machine, which we'll hopefully cover later. So. If you get the chance to buy one, by all means, buy one, you know, keep it, keep it for future generations, you know. But if you want to buy a retro machine or an old micro to use and to play with and maybe to put the odd game on, uh, do a little bit of basic programming, if that's, if that's what floats your boat, then no, not this machine. There are plenty other better better spec, more usable machines that are out there. Thank you for listening and thank you for watching.